my name's Katie and welcome to my channel where I post videos about my pets and my hobbies that are hopefully interesting and helpful. Today the video that I'm going to make is about how to make a guinea pig enclosure that's made out of timber. Hopefully this build will be easy enough for anyone to make and to give a go and see how you like it. So I'm going to run through a few different things. I'm going to go through the materials and the cost for all of the materials, the tools, and then the build itself. And then lastly, just some little things to be mindful of. So I'll run you through all of the materials that I've got for the build itself. So it's two cube storage units from Bunnings that were $54 each. I believe that you can also get these from Ikea, except I think they might cost a little bit more. And then I've got along the bottom, so the base, is three pieces of melamine that I got from Bunnings as well and they were 240 centimeters long and they were $32.40 each. Then I have one 2.4 meter piece of pine timber which came as 23.5 centimeters wide and it's about two centimeters thick and that was $43 and that piece of timber is what you see along the back. And then for the two side walls, I bought one piece of 1.8 meter pine timber and that was $32.55. And all I did was cut that in half because it's 90 centimeters wide on each side. Then I got 120 centimeter times 60 centimeter piece of PVC sheet, which is that kind of plexiglass acrylic stuff that you see on the front, which was $55.20. Then on the bottom, I have a pond liner, so I got a three times two meter pond liner, which was $67 and I've made two enclosures. So I use that for both of them. You could possibly get a smaller one that would be a little bit cheaper. And then I also added some plastic vents into my enclosure on each end and then two on the back as well. I think they were like around $7 each from Bunnings. Um, I'll talk a bit about them later. You don't have to have them, they're kind of optional. I also want to have some silicone and a silicone applicator as well. That's just going to waterproof your pond liner on the sides and your timber on the sides. So even though it's pricey, the cost is predominantly just from elevating it off the ground, which means that if you were to use something instead of the cube units and you could get something second hand if you've got something lying around if you can use different timber or something else for the base then you can cut the cost of this build significantly you'll see that I've got two enclosures I've got two boy guinea pigs in the enclosure with the gray mats and then I've got three girls in the ones with the pink mats and the you'll notice that the one in the gray mats that didn't actually need any cutting um, for the back piece of timber that's just the length that it was when I bought it but for the girl one uh, it's only 230 centimeters so I cut 10 centimeters of timber off and then I used that 10 centimeters of timber for the thing in the middle that connects the acrylic together so most hardware stores including Bunnings actually offer a free cutting service I think it's free for like four cuts and then two dollars or something like that for all the cuts afterwards i had the 180 centimeter piece of wood cut in half to make my two 90 centimeter sides and then that 240 centimeter piece that makes up the back just 10 centimeters chopped off that so it would fit with the door and then i used that little piece to hold the acrylic together in the middle so super super simple so now the tools that i would recommend drill and driver so something that can drill holes and then also drive screws in and then also a jigsaw. I think that they're a really great idea to get if you don't have them handy. If you're someone who doesn't know how to use tools, I was also that person prior to building this and it was a really good opportunity to actually give it a go. I just watched some YouTube tutorials to make sure that I was using the tools safely and knew what I was doing. The drill was just to actually drill the enclosure together and put the screws in and then the jigsaw was what I used to actually cut the acrylic and also cut the little rectangle holes in the pine timber to put my vents in. You're going to use the jigsaw to cut the acrylic. I highly recommend using a jigsaw or a power tool to cut the acrylic rather than using a handsaw. A handsaw is really difficult and I found that like it gets really hot as well using it and it just cracks it easier. It is so so much easier using a jigsaw. So you're going to keep the whole length of the acrylic for this build if you're doing the one that's a similar size and you're just going to cut two pieces that are 25 centimeters high. Now the reason that it's a little bit higher than the actual timber itself is just to make room for the base underneath. You'll see how it actually just connects nicely and overlaps so you can connect the acrylic into the melamine base. 
if you want to add the vents and you like the look of it, you think it's something you could do, then I recommend doing it. It just helps with airflow a little bit and prevents any like ammonia sitting on the bottom of the cage. I don't think it would be necessary with such an open build, but I thought I just wanted to give it a go and I like the look of it, so why not? To actually get a rectangle in the timber, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get your drill and you are gonna measure out your vent size, then drill two holes on each corner of your rectangle where your vent is gonna go and that's gonna give you room to get your jigsaw blade in there. And then you're gonna put your jigsaw in and just do a bit of a rough rectangle cut out and then you can just fine um, smooth out the edges and make it look more like a rectangle. Uh, this was a little bit difficult to get used to, but that's all right, it was pretty forgiving because I just had to fit the vent in. It's kind of like a tension um, clip-in vent and then it didn't look so great some of the cuts that I did so you'll see that I just used like an iron tape to go around them but you could also just put another vent on the other side as well if you prefer the look of that that would fit too which I think I might do at some point in the future I've still got to do some of those like little finishing touches that's all you do if you want to add the vents and so actually building the enclosure so what you're going to do is get that back piece of pine and your two side pieces and then you're going to drill a hole through the back piece into the sides once you have your hole drilled, you swap over to your driver and you drive in your screw and then it's connected. And you just do that as needed for all of the corners. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do once you've got that kind of like C shape outline is you're going to get your pond liner and you're gonna hang that over your base and you're gonna make it so that the back and the sides, it's got a bit hanging over, but you want it to be a nice snug fit at the front where your acrylic is gonna go. Then what you're gonna do is put your frame onto your base. And again, you're gonna get your drill and you're gonna drill up through your base. So through the melamine, through the pond liner and into your frame. And that's gonna keep the pond liner where it needs to sit. And you'll see how at the end that the silicone is gonna go along the front where the acrylic is so that it waterproofs that front part. Then what you can do is just get a Stanley knife and you'll just go along and cut off the pond liner that's overhanging on the side so that you don't see it anymore. All right, now you've done that, you've got your frame, you've got your pond liner, everything's ready to go. The last thing that you need to do is add the acrylic or plexiglass on the front. So what you're gonna do is get that little piece of timber that, I, that we cut off before that was 10 centimeters. You're gonna put that in the middle and that's gonna be a place where you can join your two pieces of plexiglass that we've got that are 120 centimeters each, I believe, in length. And for the plexiglass, you just wanna be a little bit careful when you're drilling holes through it and putting the screws in it as well, because if you make it too tight, then there's a risk of it actually cracking. And for the plexiglass, we're gonna use smaller screws too. I'll show you the ones that I used and what they look like in comparison to the other ones and you're going to make sure that your drill is on a nice low setting when you drill those holes in and when you drive the screw in you're going to do it nice and slowly and only as tight as it needs to be you don't want to over tighten it and you can just put as many screws as you think that it needs whatever you're happy with and then that's all done so now we're pretty much finished all you're going to do is get your silicone and your silicone applicator and you're going to make sure the room is really nice and ventilated and you've got a fan going, windows open because it's quite smelly, the silicone, and uh, you don't really wanna be breathing a lot of it in. So then you're just gonna put the silicone along the front where the acrylic is and along each side as well. And that's just gonna to help to waterproof the wood and the pond liner so that when they wee in there, um, anything that doesn't get absorbed by the mat, hopefully isn't gonna get into the melamine and ruin that. And then, once you have um, applied the silicone, it will dry pretty quickly, especially if it's warm. You'll find that maybe within like 10 minutes, it'll seem like it's dry to touch. And it's just a good idea to wait. I think we waited like 12 hours, but even 24 hours is probably better as well, just to make sure that it's completely set and completely dry. And then that's it, you're ready to go. So just for the finishing touches, that tape that I talked about before, the iron one, you might want to put that on the end of the melamine so that you can't see the exposed edges anymore. And you might wanna put that around the vents as well, if you like, if you're not a very good cutter like me. 
you're going to add your bath mats and your liners and everything. I highly recommend the Kmart bath mats. They are amazing. They're super absorbent and they dry so quickly and they don't have anything that sticks to them. So all I do is I just shake them and then I get the vacuum cleaner and get all the poos and stuff and then I empty it out into the bin and it's as easy as that. And I find that they don't smell either. I had them in there for like three, four weeks and then I swapped them out and it was fine because I find that my guinea pigs tend to do a lot of their poos and stuff anyway, like in the hay tray. And I clean that out daily with the puppy pads. So I find that this is working really nicely. I'm always about finding the easiest way to do things. I need to have things simple and I need to have them easy for me to access. Otherwise, I'm just not going to do it. So you know that if this is something that I'm enjoying and liking that it's definitely something that is going to be easy to maintain. Just lastly, some things to be mindful of and kind of like some little issues that I've come across is with the guinea pigs actually tearing or chewing holes in the pond liner. They did this the first like one to two weeks, I think, because it was new and fascinating and they just wanted to check it out. Um, I tried to silicone the holes and then they would just tear the silicone off. And so that didn't really work. What you could do is just get like a black masking tape and put that over the holes to patch them up. So just having that on hand is probably a good idea. I actually haven't even got around to doing that yet and it's been about a month and it's been fine because they do go under the mat sometimes, but I haven't had issues with like wee or anything like that getting under. And at the end of the day as well, it is just melamine and this enclosure, you could easily just unscrew it and you could just replace certain parts and things like that as needed. Now, the only other thing I just want to mention too is the walls are quite short. And the only reason for that is because that was just the height that the timber came in. I would have gone probably more like 25 centimeters if it did come in that width, but it didn't. And I didn't want it to be too tall either because I need to be able to actually lean over it as well with ease to pick the guinea pigs up if I need to and clean the cage and everything. However, some guinea pigs are really good escape artists. They're really good jumpers. Some guinea pigs can even jump out of the CNC cages, which are like 30 centimeters high. So as always, just know your pet and your guinea pig and use your intuition and your own knowledge and experience um, from your guinea pigs to guide you on that. And if you have a guinea pig that you think might jump out or like male guinea pigs that fight and are boisterous and sometimes one's trying to get away from the other one, things like that, then you might want to reconsider the height and see if you can source some timber that is a little bit higher as well. And if you do go high, the higher you go, the more that you're probably going to want to add those vents in as well, just to make sure that there's good air circulation and flow and everything like that. So that's just the last kind of little things that I wanted to mention. I hope that you found this video helpful and please, I would love to hear if anyone's going to give this a go or if anyone's got any tips or tricks or anything that they want to add, please put it down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this video and if you've got any questions at all, always comment and, and ask away. I'm always happy to answer. If you found it to be helpful, please give it a like. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel as well. And I will see you in the next video.